Ahead on The Real Story, Connecticut continues its vaccine rollout, supply in high demand. Today, a mayor's roundtable on how it's going. Hartford Mayor Luke Bronin, New Britain Mayor Aaron Stewart, and Manchester Mayor Jay Moran join us. Then, turning grief into action, Kristen and Mike Song now taking their fight to Washington, hoping to make Ethan's Law, named after their son, national. And they've got the backing of Connecticut's entire congressional delegation. This morning, Kristen and Mike Song, as well as Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro, join us. And thanks for joining us on The Real Story. I'm Jen Bernstein. We start with the vaccination rollout in Connecticut, the state having a delay last week because of the snowstorm. The governor's office estimating some 10,000 vaccine appointments were canceled. The state, though, predicting that they would be caught up by today, Sunday. Our local leaders are up front. They are seeing what's working and what is not in their communities. So today we want to start with a mayor's roundtable. Joining us this morning is... Uh, Manchester Mayor Jay Moran, New Britain Mayor Aaron Stewart, and Hartford Mayor Luke Bronin. Thank you all so much for doing this. Thanks for having us. Good morning. Good Thanks morning. so much. Good morning. All right, so let's start with um, a, a map that the state of Connecticut has put out, and, it, and it's kind of a way on their COVID website that they're trying to measure how we're progressing in the state. I have it up on our screen. You guys might not be able to see it, but we're talking about the percentage of 75 and plus people who have received their first vaccines. And this is broken down by town and city. And the governor had said during the press conference last week that a lot of the uh, smaller towns were having an easier time uh, getting their folks vaccinated, but that some of the cities, it's been more of a challenge. And you can see two of the cities here that we're talking to right now. New Britain's at 18%, and we have Hartford at 29%, and the statewide average is at 49%. So it's showing that the cities are behind. But I want to talk to you all, because I feel like this is a little bit confusing, because the different towns and cities aren't getting shipments directly to their health departments. So how do you measure it this way? So. So tell me, I want to start with you, um, Mayor Bronin. When you look at that, is that representative of how your city's being vaccinated? Well, sure, it's representative in the sense that I, th I think that data is accurate. Uh, there are huge differences between communities, and I think that that's reflected in the data. Uh, you know, uh, there are a number of things that factor into how many seniors have gotten vaccinated. For example, uh, in communities where you ha may have a number of nursing homes, uh, in many cases, all of those seniors uh, got vaccinated early on in that first wave. Uh, but there are other factors, too. The early appointment system was really online-based, and that favored folks who were online savvy and connected. Uh, a lot of the uh, sites early on required vehicle accessibility that favored folks who were mobile and had access to vehicles. Uh, and it's also important to acknowledge there is a trust gap and it's showing up nationwide that in communities of color, there's a little bit less trust in the vaccine. And so we are, I think probably all the mayors on this call and I know in, in communities across the state working hard to build that trust and make sure that people know that the vaccine has been through rigorous trials. It is safe and it's effective. Uh, so there's all of that. But what we're trying to do here in Hartford is be creative and aggressive about getting the vaccine to people. We're actually going out and doing clinics in apartment buildings where we've got a, a large number of seniors who are eligible. Uh, we're also uh, proactively calling seniors throughout our community. And we've created an online interest form, and we've asked everybody in our city to sign up a senior. If you uh, know somebody, love somebody who's over 75, uh, or uh, you got a neighbor or a friend or anybody, sign them up, and then give us, you're just giving us very simple information, and then we'll reach out and make sure that we get that appointment scheduled, and we'll drive folks to the, uh, to the clinic to make sure the vaccine gets done. So I think we are all contending with different challenges in each different community. Community, but we're all also working creatively in our own communities to try to get that vaccine out as quickly as we can. Yeah, outreach is so important. Uh, Mayor Stewart, I want to talk with you next. So I guess where I'm a little bit confused is are the different towns and cities actually ordering vaccinations from the state? 
So it, for example, the city of New Britain, our local health department has its own clinic that we're having on a weekly basis. And we're only getting 100 doses of the vaccine each week. Now we also are home to the hospital of Central Connecticut. So people can go on mychartplus.com and register there. Um, but our local health department is really only getting that 100 doses. We asked for an increase and we were denied. So we're looking at partnering with the hospital on how to better drive um, our residents 75 years of age and older to the hospital to get the vaccine because it seems to be more readily available there. We have about 4,200 um, individuals in the city that are over the age of 75 who we have tried to, to target. Um, but Mayor Bronin is right. There is definitely a trust gap uh, when it comes to the vaccine and we have to work on public education campaigns on why it's safe to get. Interesting. Uh, Manchester Mayor Jay Moran, uh, tell me, are you seeing that distrust in, in your town as well? Well, I don't know if it's distressed, but w w the numbers are a little bit better as far as 75 or older because we're a little bit smaller than the Britain in, the, in the Hartford. We're at 40% uh, for our 75 year old population. But I think Mayor Bronin and Mayor Stewart touched on a few things. I mean, our health district has teamed up with uh, Glastonbury, and we still only get 100 shots a week and have only done 300 between the two towns. And yes, we're fortunate to have a local hospital, ECHN, uh, Manchester Memorial, but they've run out of the supplies, so that's frustrating. And we're finding out that our nurses are spending more time with seniors showing them how to get online to try to sign up for a vaccination. And then I can speak from experience, my own parents that live down in West Haven, they only have one email and you need a separate email to get on. And my dad has a flip phone, so he's not gonna have an email, okay? So uh, it's it's little frustrations. I know there's no, you know, we're not pointing fingers at anyone. We're just, we're dealing with some of the same frustrations. My bigger, frust uh, my, my, the bigger uh, gap we have to look at, I'm sure we see more of in Hartford and maybe in New Britain is, we're seeing that our, our, our residents of color are not getting vaccinations, and we don't have accurate numbers at this point in time, but you know, there's stories across the country showing that 70% are mostly white, and I think um, we're starting to look into that data, and we're going to have to do, like Mayor Bronin said, we're going to start maybe a little door-to-door -door campaign out there just to get out and reach out to folks and get them signed up and help them get there because uh, it's... If they need to get out there. And as far as the distrust, does the vaccination work? Uh, I know I was. they wanted me to do it right away for that. But, uh, I was going to do it, but I think there's a lot of people who need it before me, so I still haven't done it. But, yeah, I think the more we do it, the more people that do it, uh, that, that distrust of getting will go away. But uh, we got there's a lot of uh, clinks there in, in the system as far as getting that vaccination to roll out. And so uh, we're all on the same page with the frustrations. But we're also grateful for what the state has been given to our community to help us, too. What are you hearing for the next week, Mayor Bronin? Do you know the amount that your city might have? I know, you know, the Biden administration has said that they're going to try to let states know three weeks in advance the amount yeah. that they're getting. But you, on the local level, are you, do you have an idea of what you're going to be able to do? We do now. This is the first week where we can actually project ahead and know what supply we're going to get three weeks ahead. And uh, I'm, I'm hugely grateful to the Lamont administration, uh, to Governor Lamont's team in general, uh, uh, Josh Jabal and the team that they put together that's working on this. They've been working hard and working in partnership, uh, but obviously in, in a very fluid and quickly evolving situation to get that vaccine out there. You know, Connecticut has done well. If you look nationally, Connecticut is near the top in terms of the percentage of the population vaccinated. But nationwide, we've got a long, long way to go, which is why it's great to see that the Biden administration, you know, is launching a full scale federal effort to pump that supply out, make it predictable uh, and partner with states and local governments. So we are seeing it, uh, it, it get a little bit more predictable. The other thing that's important to say is the state uh, really increased the number of operators that they had answering that phone line. So for the folks who can't do it online, it is a lot easier now to call that line and get an appointment. The wait time's just down to a couple of minutes and you can get through, get your appointment made. Uh, so there has been a lot of progress made and it's important for folks to know that too. Yeah, the phone line was big, and I, I remember Governor Lamont saying that he actually called it himself because right. at first, the first few weeks, I mean, we were getting inundated with emails, people that couldn't get through. Uh, the system, you know, totally jammed. Uh, Mayor Stewart, are you going to be able to expand vaccination sites in your town? I think the governor was talking about how there was 
a CVS in your town that's going to be able to start doing vaccinations. Uh, you know, we have, we were just showing video of Dunkin' Donuts Park. We know in Hartford that they've been able, they're going to be turning that into a vaccination site. Do you have spots in New Britain that you have planned that you know you could, if you had the supply of the vaccine, uh, vaccine that you could apply it? Yes, and we've had that for weeks now, plans of how we could expand our effort to accommodate hundreds per day, um, and that's just with our local health department. In recent weeks, we've teamed up with the management of the Hospital of Central Connecticut, which is Hartford Healthcare, um, and talked about how could we do a mass vaccination site even larger um, to accommodate than what the hospital is already doing if we were to be able to team up together and to put our supply together. Um, so we have plans in the works. Um, they have been presented presented to the state. It's a matter of waiting on the state to just approve that and, you know, to see how much vaccine we can actually get our hands on. So we're ready um, to, to go. Um, it's just a, a waiting game on whenever they, you know, can can allow us a supply because it's dependent on, I you know, it, it's a little it's difficult, right? They have to ration out the supplies based off of each community, and we certainly hope that they'll make New Britain a larger priority. As for the CVS, um, I haven't heard of that yet, um, but hopefully they'll be letting us know soon. Yeah, I, I think I have a quote here. He said they've tried to address the uh, issue of some of the towns and cities being lower on their percentages, talked with CVS, and then he had named Bridgeport, New Britain, and Waterbury trying to get well, vaccinations to them. Then I would certainly hope that the coordination would continue to be through local health departments because it seems that there's maybe a little bit of a disconnect between local health and information coming from the state. I remember when we've done this mayor's roundtable during our uh, regular newscasts, Mayor Stewart, that that's something that you brought up, uh, that you were concerned about the communication. Yeah. You felt like it was uh, jarring at points and, and there was uh, gaps in it. Uh, mayor Moran, have you felt like the communication with the state has been made your job easier? Are there ways to improve? Uh, from my, what my health director tells us, he thought he thinks the communication has been going very well. I mean, there are glitches every once in a while, and um, but they, they, uh, he, he says that it's been going great. And um, you know, at times when it's they can't get to someone, but they keep trying. But overall, he, they're happy with the experience with the uh, state health department. I just want to add that you know we all are waiting around. I mean, we have paramedics ready to help out our nurses. Uh, I think it's just. You know, we're hoping we have the good problem is, you know, how do we, we have too much of the vaccine and how do we get it out? We're just at the opposite stage right now. I think every community is ready to get them out, I think. Uh, just getting that vaccine is so important. You know, we were borrowing doses from the hospital. Now, now the hospital can't get it. So it's, uh, uh, we'll get there eventually. We want everyone to be vaccinated at some point in time. And, uh, you know, it's a whole, we haven't had a pandemic in 100 years. So this is all new to all of us. That is even the very even the old even the old guy in the call with the two young men. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But yeah, no. Look, this is not something that uh, there's necessarily a game plan on. It's kind of just learn as you go. All right. Well, I appreciate all of you so much joining me. Let's do this again and uh, keep us updated here on the real story. Thank you, Jen. Thanks, Jen. See you, Aaron. See you, Luke. Thanks. All right, coming up after the break, Kristen and Mike Song worked tirelessly to get Ethan's Law, named after their son, passed here in Connecticut. And now they're hoping it will help save kids' lives across the country. This morning they join us along with Congressman Rosa DeLauro on efforts to get Ethan's Law passed in Washington. But before we head to break, Fox 61 is celebrating Black History Month with our series, Black History is Connecticut History. Here is State Representative Brandon McGee.